in today's video, we are going to be discussing on how we use standard form and truth tables to determine the validity of an argument. But before that, let us have a recap by going to the beginning and learning what an argument is. What is an argument? An argument in mathematics is different from what we know about it in politics. An argument is a sequence of statements and reasons given with the aim of demonstrating that the claim is true or false. Now that we know what an argument is, let us also know what is the standard form. The standard form of an argument is a way of presenting the argument which makes it clear which propositions are premises, how many premises there are, and which proposition is the conclusion. How do we rewrite an argument into standard form? Here are a few guidelines. List the premises, followed by the conclusion. Remove indicator phrases, and draw a line bef between the premise and the conclusion. Truth tables take an important role in this lesson, so it is important to become familiar with the indicator phrases that we use. The connective we use are and, or, not, if, and then, if, and only if. These are the symbols that we can see once they are in symbolic forms, and these are the type of statements that they are called. And is a conjunction, or is a disjunction, not is a negation, if and then is an implication, and if and only if is biconditional. Now, let us go to our first example. If the movie was directed by Steven Spielberg, then I want to see it. The movie's production cost must exceed $50 million or I do not want to see it. The movie's production costs were less than $50 million. Therefore, the movie was not directed by Steven Spielberg. By converting this to standard form, here is what we will have. Number 1. The movie was directed by Steven Spielberg. Number 2. I want to see it. Number 3. The movie's production cost must exceed $5 million. Number 4. The movie's production cost were less than $5 million. Therefore, the conclusion is, the movie was not directed by Steven Spielberg. Now, is the statement valid or invalid? From here, we can assume that the statement is valid. But, to further understand whether the statement is valid or invalid, we may go on to use the truth tables. To use the truth tables, we will be using the symbolic forms of the statements that we had. S for the movie was directed by Steven Spielberg. W for I want to see it. C for the movie's production cost must exceed $50 million. This is the symbolic form of these three premises. S and then the biconditional is symbol and W. This translates to the movie was directed by Steven Spielberg, then I want to see it. Next, C and the disjunction statement, disjunction symbol rather, and then the negation for W. The movie's production cost must exceed $50 million or I do not want to see it. Negation C for the movie's production cost does not exceed $50 million. Therefore, the conclusion is that the movie was not directed by Steven Spielberg. Here is a truth table, and we are going to be using all of these. To get the negation W, it will be the opposite of the symbols that we have currently in W. An example would be W, line, negation W, T, 
would be the opposite for the negation, which is f, and f will be the negation, wherein it will be t. Therefore, what we will have here is f, therefore this is t, t, therefore this is f, and f, therefore this is also t. We will be doing the same for negation C, the opposite of F, which is T, the opposite of F, which is also T, and the rest is also T. For S, the connective symbol for conditional statement, and W, we will be looking at S and W. Remember, in conditional statement, a statement is only false if the latter statement is false. The rest would be true. Therefore, T and T would be true. T and F would be false. F and T would still be true. And F and F is also true. In here, where it's an OR and then a negation, we would be looking at this two, this and this. F and F will be F, F and T will be T, F and F will also be F, and F and T will also be T. For this, we are just going to look at this the S for negation S and do the opposite. T opposite is F, T is opposite is F, F opposite is T, and F is opposite is T. Why are these letters below highlighted red? Well, because this will be our critical row. How do we define what part of the truth table is the critical row? Well, we would be looking at all the values that we have before the conclusion. As you can see here, this is the only part wherein all of the symbols are T. This one is not, this one is also not, there are, there are F statements. Therefore, now that we have their critical row and all the symbols are the same, that means our statement is valid. Now, let us move on to our next example to further understand how we can determine the validity of an argument using standard forms and truth tables. Example 2. I start to fall asleep if I read a math book. I drink soda whenever I start to fall asleep. If I drink a soda, then I must eat a candy bar. Therefore, I eat a candy bar whenever I read a math book. Let us move on to getting the standard form of this description. Number one is I start to fall asleep. Number two, I read a math book. Number three is I drink soda. Number four is I eat a candy bar. And number five, or the conclusion is, I eat a candy bar whenever I read a math book. Now the question is, is this statement valid or invalid? Standard forms on its own can help us determine whether the validity of an argument is valid or invalid. However, there may be instances where it will be difficult to figure out. That's why we use truth tables and the symbolic forms to identify and make sure of our answer. The symbolic form for the statements are letter P for I start to fall asleep, letter Q for I read the math book, letter R for I drink soda, and T for I eat the candy bar. The symbolic form of this would be P and all of the symbols that they will be using 
is the conditional statement symbol. Why? Because P, if, then Q. If I start to fall asleep, then that's because I'm reading a math book. Letter R, I drink soda whenever I start to fall asleep. Next, if I drink a soda, then I must eat a candy bar. And letter T, I must eat a candy bar if I will read a math book. Here's the truth table for our next example. Now, you might be wondering why there's 8 of these T's and F's instead of the earlier one, which is only 4. Well, to explain that, we are using 8 T's and F this time because there are 3 premises that are all conditional statements. And for each true or false, it would be depending on the number of premises that you will have. In this one, we have 3, therefore 2 times 2 is equal to 4, and 4 times 2 is equal to 8. Therefore, we have 8 of these columns. Now, to find out what is the value for P and Q, if P then Q, we will be looking at P and Q. Again, in conditional statements, all statements are true as long as the latter statement is not F. Now we look at this, T and T, then T, T and F, then F. T and F is also F. F and T is T, and the rest of this is also T. We will be doing the same for R and P, except we will be using R and P. T and T. F and T is still T. T and T is T. F and T is T. T and F is F. F and F is T. T and F is F. And F and F is T. We'll also be doing the same with this, R and T. R and T is T, F and T is T, 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 the rest of this is also T. And for the last, which is our conclusion, T and Q. T and Q? T, T, F, F, T, T, F, and F. Now it's time for us to identify our This one, and this two. Now, let us analyze our critical rows. Our critical row for this one has a different letter, which is this one. Therefore, this is invalid. This one is all T, therefore it is valid. This one is also T, that means this vote are valid. However, we have one invalid statement here, or rather one invalid critical row. Just one invalid critical row means that our statement is invalid. Why? Because for all premises, there is only and always only one conclusion. Thank you for watching this video.